This is part two of the notes for March 31st. This part of the notes is on the Young double slit experiment. The Young, the Young experiment was one of the foundational experiments that showed that light behaves as a wave. <clears throat> Similar experiments were done with electrons to show that electrons behave like waves sometimes. We'll get into that in modern physics but that's a little preview of where thing of where we where we're going to start the double slit experiment we're going to have we're going to talk about a setup i have light of a given wavelength lambda that's incident on a a barrier this barrier has two long narrow slits cut in it the, the slits are a distance D apart. Beyond, those, beyond the barrier, I have a screen. This screen is a distance L beyond the barrier. So we're always going to consider the limiting case where L is much greater than D. So we can, we can basically end up using sine theta is approximately equal to tangent theta. This gets important. This gets important for approximating our equations. So when we do this, we're going to have, remember we talked about path difference interference. So we're going to have a difference in path length from the top slit and the bottom slit to get to the screen. So when it gets to the screen, they're not always going to be in phase. The waves from the two from the top slit and bottom slit are not always going to be in phase. When they're not quite completely out of, not completely out of phase but not completely in phase you're going to get medium brightness when they're completely in phase you're going to get a maximum brightness when when they're completely out of phase you're going to get dark you know, a dark spot now the entire thing that this works off of is path difference there's a little other there's a little other that tells you why the outer maxima are not as bright as the central maximum. Now you have your central maximum, which is all, which I'm also calling the primary maximum, that's on the center line, that's on the line, the line that runs halfway between the two slits. Why do you think that's? Why do you think that's a maximum? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Pause the video until you come up with an answer. When you have an answer, start the video back up again. Okay. The reason that the central maximum is, the, the primary bright maximum is right on that center line is that the path is the same. The path is the same length. There is no, there is no, difference in the path length so they must be completely in phase now your outer maxima are not as bright because there's they've tra the waves have had to travel farther and since the slits are considered or can be considered point sources of spherical waves when they're when they have to travel farther the same amount of energy, the same amount of brightness has to be spread over a much larger sphere, or not necessarily much larger, but over a larger sphere. So, so the brightness available for a particular solid angle is less. That's why they're not as bright as you go further out. However, that's not really either here nor there. 
So we want to know, we want to be able to tell where these maxima are going to be on the, on the screen. And that's actually easy to do. So the way you tell that is with the path difference. When it's a half wavelength path difference, then you're going to be at a minimum. You're going to be at a zero. When it's a full wavelength path difference, you're going to be at a maximum. And you can mathematically determine these. And the way you end up doing that is with a trig, with the trig based off of the little triangle, the little triangle where you take the center of one slit, draw perpendicular to the other slit, to the other slits, um, to the line connecting the other slit to the mat to the maximum or minimum, and the the angle the angle that the perpendicular to the the perpendicular to the line coming out of the other slit makes with the barrier is going to be the angle between the horizontal and the position on the screen that you're looking at so using similar triangles you can find the position you can find where the position on the screen is based off of the path difference and you go through a bunch of trig and you wind up getting that for a bright spot for a maximum your position on the screen is going to be m lambda l over d where m is just 0, 1, 2, is any non-negative integer. Lambda is the wavelength of your light. L is the distance from the barrier to the screen. And d is the distance between the two slits. Your position, on the, your position for a dark spot is going to be the same thing, except instead of m, it's m plus 1 half. So your first dark spot is going to be at 1 half lambda L over D. Your second one's going to be at 3 halves lambda L over D. And so on. So with that, you can calculate the locations of your bright fringes and your dark fringes if you know what the, what the distance between the two slits is, what the distance to the screen is, and what the wavelength of the light is. This is the conclusion of our notes for today. Uh, continue tomorrow. We'll continue tomorrow with talking about diffraction gratings briefly and basic principles of reflection and refraction. That's all I've got for today. Uh, Miss Swihart should have passed out your homework as well. So get to work on the homework. Homework is due Friday. There and I'm planning a quiz on Friday. Have a good day.